Now, this next question comes in from Jason Alex Miller, who was asking me what my ideal product would be. And the first thing I thought about was this Homer Simpson uh, car that was one of those classic Simpson moments where he's asked to design a vehicle to his specifications. And I was thinking, if I ever designed a product, it would probably look like this. Uh, but the question was actually a good one because we cover a lot of things that we connect up to TVs on this channel. And over the years, I've been adding more stuff to my TV. And I took an inventory of all the things I have connected to it the other day, and it's getting kind of ridiculous again. So check out what's hooked up to my TV at the moment. Uh, we've got my gaming PC uh, connected up via a fiber optic cable. I did a video about that a few months ago. Uh, we have the Nintendo Switch, which I dock up there from time to time because there's games on the Switch that are not available on other platforms that the kids and I like to play. Running with the same exact guts as the Switch is my NVIDIA Shield. It won't run anything the Switch runs because of the differences in the software uh, and vice versa. But nonetheless, the Shield is still kind of the central device because it does all of my home theater streaming uh, along with my live TV watching. It's basically my cable box utilizing my HD Home Run Prime. Uh, but we've got an Apple TV hooked up up there now because there's a couple things that I can't get on the Shield, which I can get on the Apple TV, which I'll talk about in a minute. I've got the Xbox One X up there now because there are some games on Game Pass that I like to play that are not available on the PC. And of course, there's a few backwards compatible games that I used to play on the 360 that I need this console to play with. I've got my Blu-ray player that plays the 4K Blu-ray discs, although now the Xbox is starting to do a little bit better at that. And then, of course, we have all the features built into the smart TV. Uh, and that is what I've got hooked up upstairs at the moment. Uh, this does not include, though, some of the FPGA consoles I've been playing with lately, like the Mr. and the analog consoles. So you can imagine just how much stuff now is connected to that TV. And it drives my wife crazy. She doesn't even know where to start with it anymore up there. And part of my frustration is the fact that, again, some services that should work on the Shield don't, uh, specifically HBO Go, uh, which is something that you get as part of your HBO cable subscription. This is different than HBO Now. And for whatever reason, Comcast and NVIDIA never talk to each other, so I can't run HBO Go on my NVIDIA Shield, even though it's perfectly capable of doing so. Uh, what I end up doing is Chromecasting it from my phone which works about 50 or 60% of the time. It's not always that reliable. It's been a real annoyance. I can't just hit the remote and pull up my HBO content. Uh, likewise, uh, NVIDIA and Apple aren't talking, so there's no Apple TV Plus on the NVIDIA Shield, even though it's fully capable of doing it. My smart TV, if I had a newer one, would have Apple TV Plus, but my version of the TV doesn't. Uh, so therefore, I've got the Apple TV upstairs uh, just to play these two services that I can't play on anything else that I have at the moment. That's aggravating. Uh, the other thing that I've got is a Roku hooked up to my bedroom TV for this same reason, uh, because again, the Shield in the bedroom doesn't play HBO Go or Apple TV Plus shows at the moment. So there's content that I want to watch out there that I'm paying for essentially and can't get at because of these stupid licensing agreements. There is no reason why the Shield can't play this stuff other than the fact that these companies aren't talking to each other. We saw similar things with uh, the Amazon Fire TV and YouTube in the past. That's been rectified, but it really shows you just how sometimes it's crazy that we're buying extra hardware uh, to play stuff that's fully capable of being played on stuff we already own. It's very wasteful. So if I ever designed the ideal product for me, it would first of all look exactly like Homer Simpson's car, but it would incorporate all of this stuff into a single device. And what kills me is that my gaming PC here on the left is fully capable of doing all of this stuff, uh, but it never will do all of it because there's no money in it for the companies that produce these hardware platforms. And it's so weird too, because at least back in the 80s when you had VHS and Betamax, there were two mechanically different technologies. They were just completely incompatible with each other. That's not the case now. This hardware is fully capable of doing everything. And it's just these software developments and licenses around those things and media contracts that prevent us from having these devices actually work with and play content that uh, they are fully capable of doing. And that's just the reality of life in the 21st century as a consumer electronics enthusiast. In some ways, it's good job security for me. We have plenty to talk about here on the channel. But again, I do think it's kind of wasteful that we have to buy all this stuff just to get all the things that we want to run 
to run on our televisions. And my Q&A for you this week is on this very topic. I would love to hear what your ideal product would be. Uh, let me know down in the comments below. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Rajesh, Logic GR, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.